Thank you. Uh, thanks for having me again. Uh, Chuck and I set this up a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Chuck got hit with that gunk that's going around, apparently. I got a couple of kids at home that are kind of fighting it off, too. Uh, we got the flu shot, so I don't get it. They, the, the, the press says we're not supposed to get sick. Um, fun story to start off with, talked about uh, Dort's coach and Ross Dalma. Uh, Ross, had, like I think his fourth year uh, prior to that was Greg and Solon, and then uh, way back when was a gentleman by the name of Rick Vanderberg. And I was just telling uh, the guys down here, um, Rick, I worked under Rick at Dort uh, a few years ago, and he always liked to reminisce about the glory years of winning the 1974 Iowa Boys State Championship. That was his, uh, I think it was his second year at Unity. I was a pretty young team. Earl Wouchstra was the point guard, uh, the former uh, Northwestern women's coach. And I always gave him a hard time. I said, well, you got tape of that game so I can actually see it to believe it? Nope, don't have it. Why not? It's lost. Don't have it. And I said, oh, come on, it can't be lost. No, nope. somebody had it. Somebody checked it out from the state, not to be seen again. Well, over Christmas break, I got a wild hair and started doing some networking um, and got a hold of a gentleman on the team they played in 1974. His name was Greg Cornelson from Miles High School. It's a consolidated school now, about six, but back then it was Miles, uh, way down in the other corner of the state. Uh, worked at Creston High School. Kind of looked at his picture on the internet. He kind of looked like your Earl Wouchter's age. He probably could have played some ball, big tall guy. So I emailed him out of the clear blue. I said, hey, here's who I am. Here's who Rick was. Um, are, are you the right guy? And first and foremost, do you have a tape? And about two days later, he emailed me back. He goes, I'm the guy. Yes, they beat us. I remember it well. Um, I think I do. And about two days later, he got back to me. He goes, my wife and I found it in the attic, and I'll throw it in the mail. So the 1974 state championship game arrived at my house last week. And uh, next year, Unity Christian, one of those roster spots you talked about, Unity Western Union. Well, Unity's 50 years next year, so... It'll be 40 years of that team, so they're all going to get a tape, uh, a DVD of that 1974 state championship. Now, here's the fun fact of a guy you will know to tie it all together. I plop that tape in, and first thing I hear is, this is the one you've been waiting for, Bob Wilson on the PA. You remember Bob? He used to come here quite a bit with, uh, with Dwight. Uh, so you know, it all ties together, uh, kind of uh, the history of it all. It was a lot of fun to see that. but. Uh, so that's kind of going back in time. Uh, Rick is doing well. He's in Orange City. He's retired. Um, uh, but uh, a lot of good games over the years with Dort, and I know you remember coaching against Rick. So he's pretty excited about that. I think he about dropped the phone. He goes, well, I hope it's as good as I remembered it. And I said, I think it will be. <laughs> I was looking back at my notes of prior visits uh, to be with you, and the first time I came here was 10 years ago. It was 2003, and that was my first year as commissioner. So I'm in my 10th year with the Great Plains Athletic Conference. It's interesting looking through my notes that year, and to be real honest with you, not a lot has changed. Now, there's been some small things along the way. We lost the University of Sioux Falls. We've lost Dana. Uh, people have come and go. A lot of people have stayed, which is great. But by and large, we have not seen a lot of changes in the last 10 years. Now, there are not a lot of conferences that could probably make that statement. Uh, in the country today, uh, NAI, LOF, to NCAA. So in that regard, we're a very blessed conference. Uh, we're pretty steady, Eddie. Uh, we, we keep what we have, and uh, we got a lot of tradition, and I think that's our strength, is we have tradition, we have like-minded schools, we obviously have some geographic friendliness in who we are, but uh, that's a testament to keeping this league together. That goes back to our presidents, uh, President Benoit is here today, our ADs, and coaches like Coach Thorson, who's been around this for a long time, you know, that's what keeps the GPAC going. So um, that's, that's good in a changing society, um, especially in the NAIA. NAI is at 257 members now. I think when I was here 10 years ago, they were right around 300. So there's been some changes on the NAI level. A lot of Division II exodus, but you know, we've kind of held off here in the Midwest, by and large, obviously a couple here and there, Sioux Falls most notably uh, from the GPAC, but you know, we've kind of kept that NAI footprint around here, and I think that's good. North of here, you know, the Dakota Athletic Conference was around for years and years and have, have gone. Now there's talks of trying to get them back together again, and I, I would uh, love to see that happen. Uh, maybe some new faces in the mix with that, and uh, that would be good for us as a conference to have somebody northern from here. And it'd also be great for the NAI to, to solidify some membership. So, you know, that athletics is tough. It's a tough time in athletics uh, right now. Recruiting is tough. Getting kids to come to small private colleges is tough. You know, I talked to our Nebraska presidents. They all they can say is the University of Nebraska is just upping what, what they're doing to get kids. And 
you know, it's a, it's a time where kids are looking at the dollar, and you know, private colleges are not cheap. But uh, I think we have a lot to offer, and uh, I, I, that's a testament to our schools doing a good job of, of keeping it rolling. And athletics is a big part of what we do, but it's not all we do, and I think that's important. Uh, we had uh, over 500 scholar athletes last year among our 40, nearly 4,500 athletes, and those are juniors and seniors that are getting it done in the classroom. A lot of academic teams, so you know I, I always talk about X's and O's, and that's fun. I love to talk about success, but I think it's important. Like Coach Thorson said, they're going to leave school and go on to something else when they're done playing basketball or playing football or whatever it is, and uh, it's important that they they focus on that that side of it as well. I'm just going to hit some highlights from the year, and I I always like the question and answers, so I want to open up to a lot of question and answers at the end. First of all, we had a really fun fall. Uh, I think the first and foremost thing is the Morningside football team. We had a great run, made it to the national championship, uh, just could kick it, <laughs> could <laughs> kick it in the final. Uh, if they could have had some field goals there, they probably would have walked away with the trophy, but uh, uh, you know, it was a great run. And uh, you know, after Sioux Falls won a couple in there early in the 2000s, you know, we had a lot of fun with that. It was kind of wondering maybe would we ever get a team back to Rome? And uh, this team kind of had a magic in a bottle and had a great quarterback that came back that had played wide receiver all his college career. And, uh, you know, was a high school quarterback and went back to the quarterback and narrowly misses out on player of the year nationally. So it's a special story and Steve Ryan was the American Football Coaches Association coach of the year so it's pretty fun to see your guy from the GPAC up on that website with uh, the coach from Notre Dame as, as uh, one, you know, that, that puts some validity to what we've done in, in the GPAC. So that was a fun year. Uh, the Midland football team and the Morningside cross country team uh, off the field won the NAI team champions of character awards. and. Uh, that's a neat thing. Uh, that means that they're doing things in the community that are great. I hope that you nominate your basketball teams for what you were doing when I came today. Uh, this Live and Large with the Lancers uh, program that the basketball teams at Mount Marty do. Uh, Hard Hardington today? Hardington Cedar Catholic. Uh, just a ton of kids in the gym over at Simple Arena today. Second graders uh, running around. I got a second grader at home. She'd have loved it. Should have taken her along. Um, you know, they were having fun and then looking up to those big big guys and the ladies on the other side and just uh, having a ball with basketball and they're going to be at the game tonight cheering away. So that's kind of what our level is about. Uh, it, it, we like to win and lose. Don't get, or we like to win, we don't like to lose. But we like to play the games, but we like to do things off the floor as well. So that's a great thing. We had a top 10 women's cross country team in the GPAC this year and it's been a while since we've cracked that top 10 nationally. That was the North women. They did a nice job this year, um, had a real good team. Hastings Volleyball uh, went to the national quarterfinals. And it's been a while since we've had a team go to that level in volleyball. So they uh, had kind of a fun run through the tournament in Sioux City. They actually ended up in some playoff sets, won them by two, each of them, uh, just tight volleyball, and then ended up playing number one in the quarterfinals, Concordia, California. And uh, that was a tough challenge, and that's where their season ended. But it was great for our league to get some notoriety nationally, should catapult us into next year. Um, I do want to touch on the volleyball side. Uh, Sioux City's had the national tournament for five years now and just signed a contract for three more. So that will be at the Tyson through 2000 and, let me more than 15, 2015 now. So that's a great contract we got going with volleyball. Now to the winter, sports season we're in. Uh, Coach kind of alluded to some of it, but we are in the heart of the basketball schedule. I think tonight is like the 12th or 13th game of 20. So uh, it's hitting the stretch run. We have four in the top 12 for women's basketball in the country. Uh, Concordia is at two behind Indiana Wesleyan, who took over number, over number one a couple of weeks ago. We have uh, Morningside at four, Briar Cliff is five. Uh, we also have number 11 with uh, a team in our league at Northwestern, the defending national champs, and then we have two teams receiving votes in the women. So very, very strong women's basketball. Men's side has three in the top 17. We have Northwestern at five, Dort is 12, 17th is Doan, and then we have a couple of receiving votes there as well. So we're Somebody asked me the other day, are you kind of more deep, middle down this year? And I would say yes, I, I think we are. Uh, you know, seeing Dort's women beat Concordia a couple weeks ago uh, was kind of a testament to the middle of the pack pushing hard on the top of the pack. And that's always exciting when you have a league that can do that. Um, the NAI D2 Women's Basketball Tournament will be back in Sioux City again in March for the 16th time. So we're looking forward to hosting that. Uh, that's a contract that's on books through 2014, started back in Sioux City in 1998. So it's been a while, it's growing every year, and uh, uh, had a great GPAC run there, but uh, getting those national teams in there has been great for the GPAC and for the city of Sioux City.